Sword World is Japan's answer to D&D, being born from a 1998 D&D campaign and Japan's crippling addiction to D6s. While we've never seen an official release of it, the fan translation notwithstanding, in 2022 we saw the release of the Goblin Slayer TRPG, which is a simplified version of Sword World using Goblin Slayer as a setting baseline. It's good! Alright, let's cut to the chase here already. Goblin Slayer is a 2d6 RPG, not exactly what we'd like to call the most unique system in the world, but it supplements it well. Each character is going to be composed of a character's race, background, stats, and classes. A character's race is going to give them their primary and secondary attributes, adding them together to get their final amount of scores. The game does provide you with fixed values for each of the races, so you don't actually have to roll, but most of these are going to be between 1 and 4 to start off with, with most of your final attributes being between 2 and 8. These attributes are broken down into Strength, Psych, Technique, and Intelligence, while Focus, Endurance, and Reflex are your application of said stats. So a Elf, excluding the free primary point you get, will have a fixed value of 5 for Intelligence Focused, and whenever she needs to make an Intelligence Focus check, she's going to roll 2d6 plus 5. Backgrounds, on the other hand, are a 2d6 table for each race, granting them potentially an initial class and maybe a skill, but these are pretty simple and none of them really jump out as something completely odd unless you roll one of the odd ones on the chart. These skills are broken down into adventure and general skills, with adventure ones being bonuses to adventuring, combat, and generally more useful, and general skills aren't. The odd part comes with statuses. You're gonna roll 2d6 three times, and that's that determines your life force, movement, and spell uses. So rolling a 6, 8, and 11 for our elf here, we can assign these as follows, granting us our now permanent stats. Now we get to the first of three different advancement systems. Experience points can be used to buy class levels. Instead of classes being big and important as something akin to the dragon game, Goblin Slayer has each class just be technically a plus one bonus to roles associated with them or granting better skills down the line. With 3,000 base experience points, you can freely acquire any class of your choice. So following our little elf here, let's take one level in Ranger and two levels in Priest for our half Elf Holy Ranger. By default, you'll only have enough for about two levels in two classes or three levels in a single class. But if your origin doesn't start with a class, you'll only start with maybe a 1-2 split between two separate classes. Wrapping things up here, you'll start with a handful of advancement points to buy some starting skills and congratulations, you're now ready to play Goblin Slayer. You don't really learn how to roll the dice until page 123 though, because the game does hold your hand through the entire process of making a character. Everything that can be explained in one page is explained in three in graphic detail, and that's not a bad thing. Most checks you're going to be making are going to be 2d6 plus attribute plus a relevant class level. So our half-elf holy archer isn't going to get her ranger for any spell checks, but when tracking, she'll add it. The system extends to just about everything the character can do. We may as well get to combat. Because this is Goblin Slayer, and slaying is what you are going to be doing a vast majority of the time, most of the active abilities and skills are built built around hurting things you want to die. Namely goblins, but not really. But combat is structured in a fairly unique way. When players engage in combat, they'll be placed on the anomalous battle map that is ruled by some insane ocelot god most of the time, but it's fairly standard from there. Basic initiative checks, basic combat checks with primarily player facing roles and other basic actions. But when the turn ends, you're gonna mark the attrition track by one step. For every one of these little spiked bubbles you fill in, you're gonna take one fatigue, which fills in another track which grows in penalties. All right, where and tear, but when you take damage, you're in fact increasing your wound limit, and should it reach over your current life force, you're now taking one fatigue for each standard box and two for each spiked box. Recovering fatigue mid-adventure is time-consuming as well, requiring not only a safe space, but it requires decent food. This is a nasty death spiral should the characters fall for it. As soon as you start getting tired, your ability to withstand enemies and enemies' abilities to hit you is only getting easier. Combined with the unique dynamic of boss enemies and their minions which feed them power and you have a pretty interesting combat system with lots of moving parts but each one being relatively well explained and when it's all said and done you complete the adventure get some adventure points for more skills maybe increase your adventure level which is different from your class levels get experience points to buy new classes and maybe even rank up in the adventurers guild this seems like a lot and truth be told it is a lot but goblin slayer does a good job of holding your hand through most parts providing examples and even showing you things in action 
Titans. Weep for poor dwarf shield fighter, henceforth known as shield fighter. There are two problems that kind of need to be addressed, however. The first is that it throws a lot at you at once, and this can throw people off a lot. If you're going into this expecting five years some friendly structured JTRPG, you're not gonna fucking get that. This is mud and blood to begin with. And grabbing your hand? It's there for a reason. Everything is really structured for character development, and there are many heavy recommendations for what's the correct skills to take. Don't be thrown off by how much stuff there is though. This is a friendly game at the end, but like a big fluffy dog, it wants to be friendly by throwing its entire 621 page body at you at high speeds. But this does lead me to the second issue, Goblin Slayer. This is a double-sided problem, but if you hate Goblin Slayer or anime in general, you're probably going to be turned off by this. Don't be, though. You can adapt this pretty easily to other tones and settings without much issue due to it being relatively simple structure and rule set. On the other hand, if you just want Goblin Slayer, it's not really going to be that. The back half of the book does go over the lore quite extensively, but as I said before, you can cut the Goblin Slayer from this and it still exists just fine. Do I recommend Goblin Slayer? Yes, it fills a unique niche between OSR and OSR and 5e, but don't be intimidated by it. Just understand it wants to help a lot more than it maybe should. My name is Notepad Anon, and this was Goblin Slayer TRPG. If you like what I do here, feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. And many thanks to the plutocrats who fund my delves into darkness. Now I have this map here leading to a cave. I wonder what's inside. <laughs>